What's happening guys? Welcome to part two in the series on Python machine learning. In today's video, we're gonna be covering data preparation with pandas. This is an essential component before you get to the modeling stage of machine learning. So let's take a look at what we're gonna be covering today. So we're gonna be covering the core components of data preparation for our machine learning model. Specifically, we'll take a look at how you can drop columns using pandas, how you can convert different columns to the correct data type using the as type command. And last but not least, we'll also cover one hot encoding. So this allows us to convert our data to a format that's readable by most machine learning algorithms. Ready to get into it? Let's do it. All right, so the last video ended with data understanding. So we went through, we looked at our data. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty and actually starting to prepare our data for modeling. So this video is gonna go through the entire data preparation process with the exclusion of specific feature engineering so we can get to our modeling stage really, really quick and do some practical machine learning. All right, let's get to it. So the first thing that we're gonna quickly take a look at is the trend within all of our accounts again. Now, what we noticed were that there were some accounts which potentially had different trends to others. So in this particular case, we're gonna remove them from our machine learning model. And if we wanted to later on, we could train a specific machine learning model to handle those accounts later on. So let's take a look at each one of these accounts. So in this case, we're gonna import NumPy as MP. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through and prepare a plot for each account. So this is going to allow us to visualize each and every one of these accounts individually so we get a really clear idea of what's actually happening. So what we can do is we can actually loop through each one of the accounts by just grabbing the unique accounts from the account column. So if we wanted to, we can just use the for loop to grab and print out each one of those unique accounts. So let's do that first. So what we've done is we've used a for loop and we've looped through each one of the accounts in our unique array. Now what we're gonna do is actually use these accounts to filter our data frame and visualize them using Seaborn. So what we'll do is we'll create a line plot and we'll pass the data to that line plot. Okay, so you can see that we're starting to print out our plots, but we don't have any titles and it looks like they're a little bit small. So let's go ahead and fix that. Okay, so that's looking much better now. So you can see that we're printing out each one of these accounts be useful to have the account description as well. So let's grab that. All right, perfect. So we're now printing out our plots. And just to recap on what we've actually done here. So we've looped through each of our accounts. We've reset the size so that we've got slightly larger plots. So we've passed through date as our X axis and amount as our Y axis to our Seaborn line plot. We've then set our estimator to NP median. So this basically helps fill in the gaps. And then we've set our hue to account description so that we just show our account description there. And the data that we've actually passed through is our data frame. And we've specifically filtered out on the account that we need. We've then gone and set our title and gone and showed it as we're plotting through. So if we actually open up these accounts, we can see that they all sort of have similar trends rising in December. That's fine, except for inventory. So you can see that inventory's got this really specific sort of zigzag style trend. Now this potentially means that it follows a different sort of seasonality or pattern to the rest of our account. So for our machine learning model in this case, we're gonna strip out our inventory account. Let's see if there's any others. The rest sort of look fine. Um, so in this particular case, we're going to strip out inventory and keep going with our data preparation. So what we can do is basically just filter out our data frame and remove inventory. Okay, so we've now filtered out our data frame to remove account 3 million and one, which is our inventory account, which we can see here. Now, if we check our unique accounts within our data frame, we shouldn't have account 3 million and one anymore. So if we do that, you can see that there's no longer account 3 million and one. All right, so we filtered that out. The next thing that we're going to do is start making sure that we have our correct data type. So if we check our data type, so let's just create a little bit of markdown. 
All right, so if we check our data types, we can do that using the df.dtypes function. All right, what we need to actually do is convert our year. We're going to make that an object. We're also going to make our account an object. And eventually, we're going to remove these others. So let's just make sure we get our correct data types for our year and our account. So rather than just converting our accounts to strings, we're actually going to prepend them with ACC to represent account. All right, perfect. So we've now gone and done that. What we've basically done is grabbed all of our accounts, converted them to a string, and then we've appended ACC onto the front of them. So if we take a look at our accounts, you can see that we've now got our account showing up as a string. And again, we can validate that using the dtypes method. You can see that our account's now an object. All right, we're gonna do a similar thing to year. We're basically gonna convert that to a string. And this is basically going to make sure that our features represent categorical values rather than representing a numeric feature because our year is really a category in this case. All right, perfect. So we've converted our year to a string. So again, if we check our D types, our year is now appearing as an object. All right, now the next thing that we need to do is remove those fields that we created for our analysis. So remember we created a period field, a day field, and a date field. We're not gonna use these because we already have this information inherently captured by our year and our month column. So it's really just duplicating up. So what we're going to do is just remove these columns here. All right, so to remove these columns, we're just gonna use the drop function within pandas. So this basically allows you to drop columns. If we're dropping a column, we just need to pass through a specific keyword argument called axis, and we need to set that to one. So let's do that. So now I'm just gonna pass through the columns that I wanna drop. And then I'm going to pass through one last argument, which is just in place. This means it does it to our data frame in place. We don't need to create a new variable to hold our change data frame. Perfect, so now if we go and check our data frame, we should no longer have period, day, or date. And you can see we've now dropped those off. Now remember at the start of our exploratory data analysis, we were taking a look to see whether or not we needed account and account description. These could potentially hold the same information and one is basically just a reflection of the other. So let's confirm that and let's just make sure we have the same number of accounts as account descriptions. If that's the case, then we can drop one of these. So in this case, we might drop account description. Okay, so in order to check this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to append them together and check the length. So if there's more then that means we have more combinations, which means that there's potentially inherently information which differs between them. If we've still got the same number of accounts as account descriptions, then we can drop account description. So let's first up check how many accounts we've got. All right, so we've got 12 accounts and let's check the number of account descriptions as well. All right, and we've got 12 account descriptions. So if we pen those together and we have 12 combined account and account descriptions, then let's just drop one of them. So what I've done is I've just combined them into a new column called account val. So if we check that, you can see that they're now just combined. Now we'll just check how many unique account val elements there are. All right, perfect. So we've got 12 unique account val elements, which basically means they're duplicated. So we can remove the account description column as well as our account val column. So let's go on ahead and remove those. Again, we're gonna use that drop method that we just used to remove our analysis fields. All right, perfect, so we've dropped those. So let's just double check we've dropped them from our data frame and you can see we've now removed those as well. All right, there's one last data preparation step that we need to do in order to be ready for modeling and that's converting our categorical features to a format that's going to be able to be used by the algorithms that we're gonna train in the next step. Now, a large number of algorithms that we're going to be using don't actually handle categorical values so well. So what we tend to do in data science is use a process called one-hot encoding to convert our categorical features to feature columns that are able to be read by virtually almost every algorithm. So the process that we use in order to do this is called one-hot encoding. So basically what we'll do is we'll have a unique column for each value within our categorical feature column. So say for example, we grab our year. If we wanted to convert this to a one hot encoder column, we can call pandas.getDummies. 
And you can see that we've now got a unique column for our 2019 value, our 2020 value, and our 2021 value. We can actually do this on our entire data frame. So I've filtered it out by year, and it's going to apply it to every single categorical feature that we've got within our data frame. So this is the format that a large majority of algorithms are going to require your data frame to be in. So what we can do is just perform that last step on our data frame, and that's about it. All right, that's done. So now if we check our data frame, you can see that we've now one hot encoded our entire data set. So if we check our D-types, you can see that all of our categorical features have now been replaced by their one hot encoded equivalent. And that about wraps up this video. So just to quickly recap, so we actually went through and visualized each one of the accounts within our data frame. We removed our inventory account because it tended to have a slightly different pattern to the others. We also converted our fields to the correct data type. So we converted year and account to a categorical feature. We also dropped our analysis fields that we created during our exploratory data analysis. And last but not least, we one hot encoded our data set so that we're now able to start our modeling process. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of when I release some new videos. If you've got any questions at all or need some help, please drop a mention in the comments below and I'll get right back to you. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.